Oshkosh Area School District Board of Education regular meeting for Wednesday, August 14th, 2019. Has this meeting been properly noticed? Yes, it has. Would you please call the roll? Carlin? Here. Evans? Here. Garner? Here. Herzog? Here. Olmstead? Here. Peschel? Here. Salachi? We have a call. Thank you very much. Uh, this evening we have two young men who are brothers who are going to be leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. So I'll call on Juan and Celso Collins to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We always like to have students at our meetings because it reminds us why we are here and our, one of the guide, lead guiding principles of the school board is students first. So we really appreciate your joining us tonight. And uh, thank you for taking time out of your summer vacation to, to be with us. So Juan, thank you so much. Certificate for you and Salsa, thank you very much. And uh, if you'd like to stay for the rest of the meeting, you're welcome to. Uh, but if you and dad have other plans, we, we certainly understand. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, with that, uh, we move into board administrative reports. First is the board president report. Uh, I just wanted to share and give a shout out to the uh, lunch programs that are being provided this summer by uh, First English Lutheran Church, um, St. Andrew's Lutheran Church, and Our Savior's Lutheran Church. Uh, all three of these churches have volunteers who are preparing lunches Monday through Friday uh, two, at least two of those have been doing that since summer school ended in July and they will continue until the last Friday in August. They provide a hot lunch at noontime and they also provide sandwiches and other items for children to take home for evening meals. Parents who accompany those children uh, are also provided with food. So uh, if any of you live in those attendance areas, even if you don't, they're more than willing to help serve you. I had a chance to visit the First English Lutheran site this week. They're serving about 38 students every day. And the um, St. Andrew's site, which I visited today, indicated that they're serving about 46 students every day. So uh, we really thank those, uh, those groups for stepping forward to help fill the gap in terms of lunches for, for children in the school district. I also wanted to report that I attended the CESA 6 Board of Control meeting last night. I represent this board and other large school districts at that event. Uh, they have provided um, the 2018-2019 annual report. They continue to do very well from a financial standpoint. They consider themselves a cooperative, which is what the C in CESA stands for, Cooperative Education Service Agency. And their goal is to eventually give money back to districts. Um, based on the profits that are generated from the work that they do. This would be in the form of credits toward new services that school districts would like to engage in. So um, that is something to, to celebrate. Um, with that, I think I'll turn it over to the superintendent and beginning with the uh, good news report and her calendar. Thank you very much, Dr. Herzog. Sure. Um, well, we'll start right away with uh, Propel Oshkosh, Washington Elementary School's partner at learning, recently donated some boxes of snacks for the school snacks closet, getting ready for the new school year to begin. Pictured here are Propel members Rachel Hansen and Kate Wyman delivering boxes to Washington's principal, uh, Christy Levy. The Chamber of Commerce designed this program to connect resources and talents of businesses and organizations with our local schools. Students who attend Emmeline Cook, Franklin, Jefferson, Merrill Elementary, Merrill Middle, Oak Lawn, Reed, Roosevelt, Shapiro, Washington, Webster Elementary, and Webster Middle Schools will be provided free breakfast and lunch this school year, regardless of family income, as a result of our community eligibility provision. Families will must, though, however, complete and submit applications um, so that the district can obtain the required data. 
And for a clarification on this, because this is a very exciting program for us, um, this is an opportunity, and this is the first year that our district is able to offer this to our students, um, is that if there is somebody in one of those schools that I listed off and they move to another school, that eligibility does not go with them unless they qualify for free or reduced lunch. Um, so I want to make just a point of clarification on that because that's probably one of the more confusing components of this. But for any child who attends any one of these schools, um, they will receive a free lunch and a free uh, breakfast. Congratulations to Jefferson, Merrill, and Webster Elementary Schools, who each had their fresh fruit and vegetable grants renewed for the 2019-20 school year. This program allows students the opportunity to expand their choices and experiences by being able to sample a variety of fruits and vegetables. Staff will also be working with the students this year to learn more about nutritional values. Nutrition is an important piece in a child's life year round. This year, the district offered a summer food program to students, whether or not they were in attendance for summer school, as well as adults. The total number of meals served in June and July were 3,480 breakfasts and 7,641 lunches. The demand for certified nursing assistant CNAs is strong in this area, so we congratulate the 21 Oshkosh Area School District juniors and seniors who graduated from the CNA program at the Fox Valley Technical College. This is the third, fifth year that the Oshkosh Chamber of Commerce has coordinated the program and recruited students, but the first year that there have been two classes. This training is sponsored by the Mercy Ascension Foundation, Oshkosh Rotary, and the school district. On Monday, those 21 students who graduated from the CNA program had the opportunity to participate in a job fair where they were interviewed by seven area healthcare employers. A total of 67 interviews took place with staff from Ram Maravita, Edinburgh, Valley Visiting Nurse, Parkview Healthcare, Advocate Aurora, and Mercy Ascension. The students interviewed for youth apprentice, apprenticeship healthcare positions. Youth Apprenticeship, or otherwise known as YA, is a school to work program offering high school students credits as they explore careers they are interested in pursuing. The integrated school to work program at Oshkosh Corporation provides students with the opportunity to complete academic requirements in the morning and receive on the job training in the afternoon five days a week. Students enrolled in the program will complete required coursework at the Oshkosh Corporation under the direction of a certified high school teacher and will spend the afternoon working at the Oshkosh Corporation facility. During the ceremony, students signed a commitment to participate, officially entering the two-year program. Leaders from the Oshkosh Corporation, the Oshkosh Area School District, as well as the Oshkosh Area School District School Board addressed the students and their families and discussed the importance of the program. And pictured in front of you are some of the activities uh, that I have been involved with uh, since our last school board meeting. Um, please, albeit be aware that some of these were um, a couple day events, uh, as well as there was a little bit of vacation time built in there for us since our last meeting as well. Um, but as you can see, I continue to remain uh, committed uh, to building community through education and to being present and engaged in our schools and throughout the Oshkosh community. Thank you very much, Dr. Kirkman. And under, if it's okay, uh, Dr. Herzog, under our district administrator's supplemental reports, I would like to ask Ms. Conrad to come forward to um, publicly speak related to one of the items written there uh, for the 2019-20 uh, calendar, since we are making a modification from what uh, was originally um, approved by the school board. Thank you very much. So, Ms. Conrad. Uh, we were informed uh, early this summer that the Department of Public Instruction is going to be discontinuing administering the ACT work keys. Currently, in our board approved calendar, we have one day um, that is dedicated to the ACT where students in grades 9, 10, and 12 are not attending school but the 11th graders do. And we had a half day in um, there as well for the ACT work keys day. We no longer need that half day. We would like to make that a full school day for all high school students, grades 9, 10, 11, 12. That moves us 
from being able to absorb 5.8 instructional days in our calendar to 6.3 instructional days due to inclement weather. So um, that is what the modification is for. Thank you, Ms. Conrad. Are there any questions on that? All right, thank you very much. I think that's coming forward to the board as a... Um, and that will be coming at our next board meeting as a resolution. Voted. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, moving on then. Do we have any committee chair reports today, tonight? I do. All right, I'll hold on. Sure. <laughs> this is helpful. This is this is much. So we had a policy and governance meet twice, um, on July 11th and on Monday, August 5th. Um, in the board packet that is available for us and the public are all of these policies in there. Um, some of the ones, though, that I think uh, that I want to talk about, I'm just going to glance through them. Um, on July 11th, we did have um, both of Mr. Leader and actually just Craig came um, and talk about the co-curricular handbook. There was some changes in the handbook for the schools. Um, information to update about serving suspensions, um, some clarification on breaking code and confessing violations, um, WIAA adopted language regarding felonies and participations, and change regarding truancies versus unexcused absences, and then date changes were in there. So that's, there's a big chunk in there that's new. That, um, so make sure those kids are watching the, the new um, handbook this year for sports. Um, the next one that we did was the legislative committee. Um, we This is the new policy. Uh, the committee reviewed and we made a draft of the policy. Um, and I know we're going to vote on all of these tonight, but particularly this one, and then move to making, um, amending it and putting um, people on that committee also. Um, so then the rest of them on the Thursday of the July 11th, we got through most of them. We did have to move quite a few to our August meeting. Um, they all came from NEOLA policy for updates. For all of them were updates with new laws, um, changing some language, things like that. There's none of them in there that I think are, are anything that are, um, it was just punctuation and changes like that, um, payrolls and fundraising. All of them are in the board packet for the um, for everybody to see. So if there's any questions on those, I'd be happy to answer any of them. But there's so many, so I don't think I was going to go through all of them. But that's okay, unless you guys want to go through. Jim, don't even. <laughs> um, and then on Monday, August 5th, all of them we brought some over from the prior prior uh, meeting. All of these also were the NEOLA policy updates. Um, there was nothing in there, and then it, it once you change one, then it goes to the staff, and then it goes to administrators, so it, they're all you know triple effect. So all of those are on the board packet, so I'm sure you guys all read those too. So if there's any questions on those, I'd be happy to answer them. Otherwise, um, the citizens out there can definitely read this board packet online. They're all in there. If they have any questions, they're welcome to call too, unless you guys want me to go line by line on these. Mm -hmm. We good? Okay. okay. I think we're good. Thank That's you. good. Thank, Thank you. you. Are there any other committee reports There's a lot tonight? of them. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Olmsted. You're welcome. Okay, then we move on to the non-agenda related public forum. We have two individuals who have signed up to uh, speak tonight. That would be Kim Blake Youngworth and Devin Hudak, and my understanding is they want to do that together. Yeah. No, so Devin, I don't know who Devin is. Me. Chris, is the one that oh, okay. Oh, me. okay. Chris's name wasn't on here, so I. Yeah, sorry. That's all right. So it's Chris Richards and Kim Blake Youngworth. So together, you have six minutes. So let me just read the uh, the statement that we always read for, before public forum. Uh, we ask that you clearly state your name and address and the topic that you wish to address. If you are acting as a spokesperson. For a particular group of individuals, please indicate the group that you represent. State clearly and concisely the matters of concern. Please limit your comments to the time allotted, which would be uh, three minutes each or together six minutes. Remember that the use of specific names of district personnel may lead to legal liability. In such instances, please pursue the district's formal complaint process by contacting the superintendent's office at 424-0160 to direct you to the appropriate administrator. Thank you. 
My name is Kim Blake Youngworth. I um, live at 1731 Minnesota Street in Oshkosh. Um, I've lived in Oshkosh all my life. I reside a few blocks from Smith School, as I have for 30 years. Um, no children of mine have ever attended Smith School or had anything to do with it. Um, several weeks ago, I heard through Facebook and friends that there were lots of stuff being thrown away in the Smith School dumpsters, and um, that and I admit that I am one of the hundreds of residents that rescued items out of the dumpsters at Smith School. And this began approximately June 12th and um, concluded on August 10th when I went in there. I'm also the person that I'm sure you're all aware of found the medical records that were in the dumpster. Um, this is just a picture you can look at of how the records, all the different things were thrown into the dumpster. Um, they were not thrown in, in boxes or things, they were just tossed in there. These are the types of things that I found in the dumpster. Um, and as we all know, that issue has been somewhat resolved in that <clears throat> you're all aware of that. And I believe um, either a FERPA complaint has been filed or will be filed on those records, that record breach. Um, what I am more um, upset with tonight and would like to bring up tonight is the terrible, awful, appalling waste of items that were thrown into the dumpsters at Smith School. Um, I have many, many pictures here that you can see of things that were taken out of the dumpsters. Again, hundreds of us were in there. I'm told there's a video camera, so if they would merely watch the video camera, all of the things I'm telling you that are in the dumpster were there. Um, and. It upsets me because this is the tip of the iceberg. The pictures you're seeing are two times that we stopped at the dumpster and picked stuff up in that two month period. I don't know how many times it was dumped, but probably on a weekly basis. Um, and so the amount of money for the dumps, the amount of money to pay someone for two months to haul this stuff out of the school, um, me as a taxpayer, it makes me ill. Um, I would like to say that all of the items you're handling and seeing today, including these brand new clipboards, um, you're more than welcome to take them because I have a case of them at home that I got out of the dumpster at Smith. Um, that is one of the flip charts that we took at Smith and I proceeded for the last two days to write down all of the things that I saw in the dumpsters at Smith wow. School. I have cases of napkins, Kleenex boxes, which my neighbors told me they were to provide four boxes per year. Um, it was unbelievable the amounts of things that were thrown in the dumpster that were um, rescued out of there. I do feel that a lot of the things that were rescued were put to good use. Chris and I alone put it in many, many different um, places. I was at the listening session earlier. What I'm asking is for a resolution as in somebody needs to be held responsible for this decision. And I would like some type of protocol so that at the end of the year, these items are not tossed out. Because I do believe Smith is a, got us record, or got it noticed because there was such an overabundance of materials because it was the whole school. But I do believe that it's an issue that is not just related to Smith. I've heard from other people that there's lots of stuff thrown out at Carl Traeger if you go in the week after school and somebody just mentioned that there was stuff found in Metal, at Merrill Middle School yesterday in the dumpster that they took for their kids for school this year. So I think it's an issue bigger than just Smith School and maybe that was a mistake. Maybe that was somebody accidentally threw something that they weren't supposed to away but I think it's a bigger issue that it's not being addressed where all of these things are going. Um, Chris also has um, pages and pages of things that she saw in there that you're more than welcome okay. to look at. That one's mine. Have, well, I'm sorry. Here, I have, um, I have copies. The other thing, one of the things on the top of Chris's list that probably upsets us the most is four bags of hats, mittens, and scarves that were knitted by some Here. grandmas out there in the school <coughs> system. And people at the Boys and Girls Club and different places obviously could have used that. Um, again, I'm going to say that I do have a list of different places. The teacher's closet being one, I work at Peace, and the teachers utilize that, so it'd be nice if we could have had that for the teacher's closet, although some of it did get there. And my name is Chris Richards. I live at 346 West 17th Avenue. I was a Smith parent, PTO president, involved parent, community member, 
And the stuff that I handed out in those pages, and I would have used one of the Smith staplers, but we gave it away. I um, saved them, and I do have to admit, like Kim said, the four bags of hand-knitted hats, scarves, and gloves was the biggest sucker punch for me. Because as I was throwing them out of the dumpster and my partner in crime was catching them and putting them in a van, I, that it, it was appalling. It was appalling. Everything else, yes. Medical records, supplies, tables, benches, filing care, yes. It was all bad. But furniture. I think that, yeah, the Buckstaff furniture, the media shelves in the basement from Buckstaff that were thrown away. Mm -hmm. um, the, the handmade items that were probably donated materials, donated time, <coughs> donated effort, given to us in good faith of protecting kids in the winter months that we all endure, were in the dumpster. So we saved them and they are long gone and everything else that is off these pages of pieces of paper are all in safe homes. So And I, I do want to, one thing to say is you guys kind of kicked yourself in the butt because a lot of people that I have talked to have said they will no longer donate to the school system, to the fundraisers, to the OCAT, to this, to that, because if this can all be thrown away, and that's why I guess I advise you if you make a decision of whatever, <coughs> I would also do a press release <coughs> acknowledging that this was all thrown away, and if you want to claim it as an accident or whatever you want to do, right. but there's an awful lot of people that know this stuff was in the dumpster, and they are not happy, any happier than I am. Ladies, we thank you. Your time is up. Thank you. Thank you. I'll keep the pictures. Uh, we do have one question. May we keep those pictures or may we get copies of those pictures? Um, you can have them because I don't really need them. You can get them back to you. You can, actually, you can probably have all of this stuff because I don't really need it. And like I said, the clipboards belong to you guys anyway. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Uh, this is a situation, Thank as you. we all know, that has uh, come to light um, to the administration and to the, the school board since uh, last Saturday, I believe. And uh, the, I can assure you that the board takes this very seriously, as does administration. An investigation is currently underway to determine how this happened and what appropriate steps will be taken next. So uh, I don't know, Dr. Cartwright, you care to comment at this point? but. My comment is, my comment on this is, I'm speaking on behalf of the district, our sincerest apologies on this. This was not to have occurred. There has something occurred that was not supposed to have occurred. And it's very obvious. Um, we are taking this extremely seriously. Um, we're being very careful and very deliberate on our investigation at this point in time. Um, hence, I cannot divulge any more information related to that, but I do, on behalf of the Oshkosh Area School District, I, have, I please give the community my sincerest apologies about this because it should have never occurred. Thank you, Dr. Cartwright. Um, we did not have, a, oh, I'm sorry, Devin Hudak had signed up, signed up for a non-agenda related item, so we'll call Devin forward, please. And it looks like she's being joined by board member Stephanie Carlin. Yeah, is that okay? Yeah. Six minutes. Oh, okay, six, six minutes. minutes. So we can have six minutes, yeah. Uh, Stephanie Carlin, 2803 Stony Beach Street. Devin Hudak, 1371 Pheasant Creek Drive. So I invited Devin to speak tonight about a fundraiser that we're doing on um, August 31st, Labor Day weekend. It's at the Leech Amphitheater, and it's called Celebrate Oshkosh. And I'm gonna let Devin tell you a little bit about what's happening. Yeah, so we, um, we are speaking on behalf of a new foundation that is we are starting called Oshkosh Kids. Um, and in conjunction with Oshkosh Kids, we are starting uh, this fundraiser called Celebrate Oshkosh, August 31st at the Leech. Um, the time frame is from four to 10. Um, this is geared towards 18 and up, but families are welcome. Um, we are trying to make a fun event that kind of branches out and reaches different populations that may not be able to go to events such as golf outings or some of the typical fundraisers that people have around town. Um, we are going to be doing a ton of events throughout the night there. It is going to be a $4 entrance fee, and that is representative of um, a dollar amount that is going to go we're trying to raise awareness for this event as much as possible to help as many kids in the district. Um, so the $4 is representative of how much um, it would cost for a child on the free and reduced lunch program to eat um, breakfast and lunch for a week. So we're just trying to 
create the awareness that a small donation such as four dollars really goes a long way some of the events that we are going to be doing are um Badger Sportsman's is going to be sponsoring a sheephead competition. We are going to be going to have a Canadian tuxedo contest that is sponsored by Duluth Trading. There will be a king and a queen of the event, and they will get um, a shopping spree to Duluth Trading here in Oshkosh. So something fun, and for those who don't know, Canadian tuxedo, a jean-on-jean -jean outfit, or whatever you interpret it as. Um, we are going to be having cow pie bingo. We are currently selling raffle tickets, which I gave some to Steph, um, and they are going, if you guys do not know what cow pie bingo is, feel free to reach out, um, and we can explain some more from there. Uh, we are going to be having uh, meet the world's largest meat raffle. Um, we're calling it a meat raffle, but really, obviously, people aren't going to be bringing coolers to the event, so it's going to be gift certificates, um, little tchotchkes, fun stuff, um, we're selling paddles for $2 a piece. Um, just some fun different ways to create mo create um, awareness of what's going on in the district, some fun stuff to get people um, in the same area. And then Jay Council is going to be performing from 7.30 to 10. Um, so we do encourage everyone to come out and see the fun stuff that we have going on. We're going to be doing mm -hmm. um, a backpack sponsorship, um, $20 sponsors a backpack, um, and representative to the kids in the district who – um, are homeless, so just kind of <coughs> branching off awareness as many places as possible. Mm -hmm. So I will let Steph speak on more yeah. facts and uh, statistics of it. Yeah. Thank you. So I actually should not be sitting here because I am not doing the brunt of the work like Devin and Julie Dumkey, but Julie couldn't be here tonight, so I didn't want Devin to sit here alone. But as you know, we have 100, roughly 150 um, students that are homeless in our district, and the funds that we raise in this event will go to helping them directly in need. So this is a very, um, I'm very passionate about this uh, project and this foundation and I'm excited for the event it's gonna be a blast and I hope you can all come that's, that's all right. it. thank you thank, thank you very much so much thanks Devin yeah. all right we did not have anyone sign up for an agenda related public forum so we will move into our first and only workshop which is PK 12 supportive and alternative education plan update with Mr. Kemmer, and it looks like Ms. Conrad will be joining him. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. I'm here to be supportive. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of that going around. Yes. <laughs> All right, so um, we're presenting on the updates to our, our plan. Um, this plan uh, was put into place in 2014 as a way to provide an overview of the services and supports, interventions, and instructional options that are available to students in the Ashkosh Area School District. So every year in spring, uh, we bring a committee together to review the plan and, and put any updates in place that, that we feel are warranted. Um, along with that, uh, the school district is required every year uh, by state statute to review the plan, but also to identify how we are designating students as being at risk. So we have to review the criteria and um, make sure that that's how we're gonna continue to move forward. So the plan itself, um, I'm not gonna spend too much time scrolling through this, but this is what it looks like. It, it's, it's about 16 pages long and uh, it, it's 10 sections. And uh, again, I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time going through that, but, um, I'll touch on some of the parts that we made the most changes to. So the committee met on April 11th, and these were the committee members that met up. And these are the plan sections. So uh, the, the plan begins with an introduction. Uh, we go into the alternative education philosophy, uh, go into the goals and objectives of the plan, uh, then touches on the applicable laws and state statutes as well as um, how we identify students as being at risk, how we notify parents when we have a student who is at risk, um, what services and supports are in place for our students who are identified as being at risk, and then what progress monitoring tools we use for these students, um, how we evaluate our programs, and then finally, any OASD policies that, that touch on our alternative education programming. So to start out, these are the, the goals, 
this is the goal and the object objectives that our, our plan was really created around. So the overall goal is that the uh, Oshkosh Area School District will strive for all students to be college, career, and community ready upon graduation. And the way we're going to accomplish that is through these four objectives. So we want to increase graduation rates, increase the opportunities for school success for all students through interventions, career, and academic planning, uh, provide early intervention for students exhibiting risk factors, and involve parents and students in the student's academic, social, emotional, and or behavioral improvement process. Now, these, this is the original goal and objectives that were created with this plan back in 2014. However, uh, since the board has updated the district mission and vision and uh, we're embarking on our new strategic plan, I am anticipating that we're going to spend more time this spring taking a closer look at this part and uh, making some adjustments here. So in terms of identification, uh, state statutes really lay out how we need to identify students as being at risk in grades 5 through 12. Uh, in grades PK through 4, it, it's really left up largely to districts. So for us, we decided to focus in on attendance, uh, behavioral and social emotional growth, and then academic growth, uh, mainly in the areas of reading and mathematics. The district does have some flexibility to add additional criteria to uh, what's laid out in the state statutes if we so choose, but we've always just gone with uh, what's listed in the state statutes. So in order to be identified as a student who is at risk uh, in grades five through eight, you have to have two or more of these areas. Um, and they are, you have to be two or more years behind uh, your age group and basic skills, identified as a habitual truant, uh, be a parent or pregnant, uh, being adjudicated delinquent, uh, be an eighth grade student who scored below basic in all academic areas on the state assessment, or be an eighth grade student uh, who does not get promoted to the ninth grade. And then for grades nine through 12, the criteria is identical except there's a seventh, uh, which is the first one on, on, on the list here, which is uh, a student has to be one or more years behind the age group uh, or their peers in the number of credits that are attained. As we start to look at at-risk identification and Here's something we know as a school district. These are the strict definitions that come like within state statute or state identified, but we know in the Oshkosh Area School District that any given time, a student can have a barrier, can have a struggle, could have things that are, um, are holding them back from learning. Any student at any time can be, could be at risk. And so as we go further into the program plan, you're going to see um, programs, services, and supports that we put in place because at any time a student could be considered at risk. Yep. So these are just the Wisconsin statutes is what you're saying. Correct. Ours are better than this. Correct. Like Good. we have listed in because there's very specific requirements. Yep. This that is the we bare minimum. To, this is the bare minimum, Good. but you can see from the rest of our presentation and when you go into our plan that we are really looking at the needs of all students. Good. And when we say all, we do mean all. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So many of the sections that are in our plan are really aligned with state statutes. So unless something within the law changes, those areas of the plan remain fairly consistent. However, there are some areas that tend to change or some sections that change a little bit from year to year. So one section that we usually have some updating to do on is section eight, which touches on progress monitoring. And for this year, the only change to that section was we added the iReady assessment to our list of progress monitoring assessments. Mm -hmm. uh, and iReady is an academic assessment. I don't know if you want to talk any more about yeah. So um, iReady is an additional assessment that gives more um, information to parents, students, and, um, and teachers when it comes to academic progress in reading and math. We're going to be, we piloted that in math, fifth grade um, through eighth grade. We're going to expand that into reading and to mathematics um, this coming school year so that'll give us more real-time um, student learning information so that we can respond to it um, at the classroom and at the school level. So that's an exciting development coming um, and also we know that we need to have our most accurate information um, in that policy when it comes to assessments mm -hmm. so most of the changes that were made to this plan um, come in the form of the the matrix the alternative education matrix that we have as a district so this is what the matrix looks like it's divided into two sections the first section is community collaborations and pro programs and services and the second section is OESD collaborations, programs, and services. So you can see that we have 
quite a few programs, services, and supports that are here in the district for all students. In terms of what we added for this year, uh, there were five um, main pieces that we added. The first is the, the partnership that we have with the Christine Ann Domestic Abuse Services uh, Center. Uh, we've had a relationship with Christine Ann for, for quite a number of years. For some reason, it was never included on our matrix, though, so we wanted to make sure to get that on there. Christine Ann comes into many of our classrooms and does lessons on healthy relationships, mm -hmm. and they also provide mentoring support for some of our students. Um, the, the next one on there is Mentor 2.0. Mentor 2.0 is a new program that we're putting in place for this year. Uh, it's a partnership that we have with the uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters organization. And it, it's, uh, it's actually a virtual mentoring support program. So it's going to be in our Project Phoenix program at North High School. So Project Phoenix is another alternative program. Um, but it's, it's actually uh, a pretty neat program how it's all set up so every week students in the program will be going online and meeting virtually with their mentor and then every month they meet face to face with their mentor and the idea is that relationship continues over that four-year period and the mentor really serves as a guide for that student as they head down whatever uh, college or career path they choose so um, if you're interested in learning more about mentor 2.0 if you go to the Big Brothers Big Sisters website uh, of the Fox Valley region, which is www.bbbsfvr.org. If you go to the search icon and type in Mentor 2.0, the first search result that comes up is an actual page dedicated to the program that's going to be implemented in the Oshkosh Area School District. So. Uh, provides more information on Mentor 2.0, but at the very bottom, if anybody out there is interested in becoming involved with the program, you can click right here and apply. So we're we're looking for we're pretty excited about that. Yeah, yeah. So we're looking for good people to serve as mentors for the program. You said that it was um, to have that relationship for four years. Mm -hmm. So we're doing this for freshmen. What if a sophomore all of a sudden wants to do it? Can they enroll in this too? So uh, we're starting with the freshman group this year. Okay. So okay. the idea is that cohort will move through mm -hmm. high school with their mentors. Um, okay. We actually received funding for the Community Foundation for three years. So this program will be in place for at least three years. Okay. Um, so we'll have at least three cohorts of students that uh, receive the, the virtual mentor. Okay. And how many students are that you guys looking at doing in this for the first year? So we, we could accommodate up to 50 students. Oh, okay. Um, but at least for this year, we want to make yeah. sure that every Project right. Phoenix student, yep. Project Phoenix out. student, mm -hmm. has, has a mentor. So got it. Okay, thank you. Good question. Uh, the next one is School to Work program. I'll let Julie talk. We'll and this one is we just had in the Good News report that the junior, uh, the next class of School to Work students uh, had draft day just uh, last week. But uh, School to Work program um, is a, when we talk about supportive and alternative, it's really for students that are looking for a non-traditional way to complete out their, their high school career. And that's the key to a lot of the alternative and supportive matrix options on there. It's um, a lot of times we think of this has to be for students that are um, fit a certain criteria or we have um, that have a lot of barriers or deficits. It's also can be for students and families that are looking to do their education a different way. And so that's what the School to Work program is. You'll also see on that supportive matrix our eAcademy where students are in, um, accessing an online environment versus a face-to-face -face or a brick and mortar environment. Um, the same thing with Project Search. Project Search is with um, Ascension Mercy and where students are learning in a very different environment than the traditional the traditional school day. How many kids are in Project Search? Project Search is 12. They can accommodate 12 students each year. And then for our school to work program, we have 19 students, juniors and seniors, who will are ready to go. Actually, they already started yesterday. The last one we have listed up there is Sources of Strength. And Sources of Strength is a program uh, that's part of our Rise Up Mental Health Framework. And uh, it's in place at both North and West High School. Uh, Sources of Strength is billed as a suicide prevention program, but really it does a lot more than that uh, in terms of establishing healthy relationships with students, teaching um, positive social and emotional skills, um, 
who to go to in terms of um, being a trusted adult in the school and the community. Uh, and it's, it's a student-run uh, program, too, which is kind of neat. So every year, we have our adult advisors and our, our peer leaders go through a training, and then the students run a series of campaigns throughout the year that are focused on different pop topics. And it's all uh, based on um, mental health and wellness. So we're excited to be kids. going into year three of that program. Source of the Strength imp impacts all kids. Mm -hmm. However, there's a core leadership of students um, that work with adults within the building, the high school building, in order to push out the messaging. So it's like 10 of the leadership sources of strength. Yeah, so it, it varies year by year. We, mm -hmm. we try to shoot for 10% of the school population. Uh, because our high schools are mm -hmm. so large, we yeah never really get that many, but mm -hmm. um, we would probably hover around 60 to 70 students each year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Zoe so did the last year, and they went and had the training at the Boys and Girls mm -hmm. Club. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what are your, I, I've done a bunch of research on this program, and there's mixed results, mm -hmm. and it's, again, as we always say, if it's not carried out in the way that it was meant, then it doesn't do very well. Mm -hmm. How are we ensuring that we're getting the results that the original uh, folks that created it are getting? Yeah, so it, being a part of our Rise Up framework, there are a number of indicators that we're looking at, including our YRBS data, mm -hmm. um, our, our attendance rates, and a number of other things. Um, and the, the YRBS data that we've collected over the last three cycles now is, is extremely positive in okay. terms of looking at the, the rate of students that are demonstrating uh, symptoms of major depressive disorder, mm -hmm. um, as well as the number of students that have indicated on the survey that they've attempted suicide. Mm -hmm. um, we were trending up for, for quite a few years in both of those indicators. Mm -hmm. And uh, since implementation of Rise Up, uh, we've not only plateaued, but we started to see a decrease in both of those areas. Nice. So mm -hmm. it can't all be attributed to sources of strength that rise up, but it, it's a pretty good indication that the things that we're doing collectively are having the impact that we're looking good. for. Okay. Thank you. Dr. Kurt Wright. Um, real quick only because we didn't um, want to touch on that with about project search. Um, as to that program is a program that's specifically designed for students with disabilities yeah. who have already completed high school, however, um, are still looking for some of those employability skills. Mm -hmm. And so it's a partner um, that we, we partner uh, with, a, with an organization that comes in and we, um, we also work uh, with one of our hospitals and give them job skills uh, within those areas with the goal for them to be able to transition from the program and obtain a job yep. um, usually within that mm -hmm. industry mm -hmm. so um, just a quick overview for that thank you thank you so the bulk of the time that that we um, used when we met up was really to discuss the the current programming options and uh, looking at possibly building on or creating new programs for our district um, the first program that we really focused in on was our new start program which is a GED 2 program um, it's specifically for students who are entering their senior year that are 17 years old or older that are credit deficient and um, the, the program itself uses the GED test to measure uh, competency in a number of academic areas mm -hmm. um, but allows students to attend school for three hours a day and then there's a work component as well so students are required to have a job and it's really a, a nice option for some of our students that made it to their senior year but really without a program like this, wouldn't have much hope in graduating on time. So uh, the program itself has a cap of 15 students. It's currently located at North High School, uh, which in the past has created some barriers for some of our West students in terms of transportation and um, just accessing the program in general. Uh, but over the past three years in particular, we've seen a, a dramatic increase in the number of West students who have accessed the program mm -hmm. to the point where we've actually had a wait list the last couple of years and going into this year we, we do have a small wait list again uh, so the question is usually brought up each and every year of, of whether or not we should create a new program to be housed at West High School which we already have a GED2 license allocated to West it would just be a matter of finding the FTE to create another section of that so um, it's one of the things that was discussed as well as taking a closer look at our Riverside program. So Riverside is a similar program in that it's for students who are credit deficient, but that's housed at uh, Fox Valley Technical College. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's probably one of our more popular programs for students who are credit deficient, mm -hmm. um, being and, that it's and housed. very successful. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think part of the draw is that it is in an adult learning environment. Yes. Uh, but again, students come for three hours a day, are able to um, have a job outside of 
of school. And in addition to using that GED test to measure competency, there is a classroom component uh, with the wonderful Riverside instructors that we have there too. So um, one of the issues with Riverside is there is always a rather large wait list. So going into this next year, we already have 47 on the wait list and that continues to grow throughout the course of the year. Now the wait list isn't all that bad of a, a thing to have in place, but the size of the wait list is what's the concern. Um, having the wait list really makes students who are, want to be in the program uh, earn their way in, but when you have a wait list that you know, mm -hmm. rises, yeah, approaches 50 or rises above 50, uh, for a lot of our students it means that they're mm -hmm. not going to make it in in a timely manner. So we did talk about what would that look like if we added another section. So that would mean 14 more students could access the program, but that would come at a cost of about $92,000. Um, something else that we regularly discuss uh, when it comes to alternative education programming is having a middle school option. So uh, before my time in the district, we did have a school within a school program at the middle school level, but that um, came to an end, I think, due to budget cuts. Um, but I, I know our middle school principals in the past have asked for some sort of programming. And uh, in talking about that, we've taken a closer look at our Empower program, uh, which is at West High School, and our Project Phoenix program, which is at North. Both have been pretty successful in their first few years. And the discussion is centered around, could we potentially modify some sort of pro or structure similar to those to, to put in place at the middle school level? Some of the hangups that we constantly come back to is, that it would be very difficult to put five programs in place, one at each middle school. So then the question becomes, where are you gonna house the program? Mm -hmm. And uh, that becomes more difficult when you think about yeah. uh, the, the resources that schools have. And if, if, we're, mm -hmm. if we're putting a majority of our students that struggle with uh, attendance, behaviors, or academics into one location, uh, it's gonna drain the resources of that building pretty quickly. Uh, in addition to um, the data for those schools and, and kind of how that would be reflected if, if we had more of our students struggling in those areas in, in one location. So those are just some of the barriers that we would have to talk about if we were to implement a, a program like that in any of our middle schools. Uh, the next area we discussed was K-5 preventative programming. And, and this is one area where I think we've made some major strides over the past couple of years. Uh, so last year we reallo reallocated some FTE to um, higher three more behavior interventionists for our elementary schools. And uh, our, our principals were very appreciative of that resource last year. Going into this year, we again re reallocated some FTE to make sure that we have a full-time elementary counselor in every one of our buildings. Mm -hmm. And I think that's gonna make a huge difference for our elementary schools. Uh, in addition to that, we're piloting a social emotional learning curriculum in five mm -hmm. of our elementary schools. So uh, what that's really gonna do is, <coughs> is help embed social emotional learning into all aspects of our curriculum. So hopefully students um, will be taught you know, how to regulate emotion a little bit better, uh, resiliency factors, how to make uh, responsible decisions, uh, develop positive relationships. So that those are a lot of the things that that social emotional learning curriculum is gonna teach them. We're also uh, using a, a data collection tool uh, which is called Sabers uh, that is really gonna help us uh, figure out if, if the curriculum itself is having the impact that we hope it will. So the idea is that if the pilot is successful in the five schools that we're um, doing it in this next year that we can look to expand it to more or all of our elementary schools going forward. Um, and going forward with that, with that social emotional learning piece, we're really looking to integrate it, um, especially into our, our literacy, our social studies, and into our content area because social emotional learning cover it doesn't fit into one category or one uh, content area, and so. Um, as parents start talking with their child, um, you know, if you say, oh, look, uh, what social emotional unit did you do? Nobody's going to be doing a social emotional uh, learning unit. It's really going to be about how do we embed those um, characteristics, those strategies that students need um, every single day right into their, their classroom so it feels, it feels seamless. And um, our elementary educators are, are very good at being able to, to do that. So um, our hope would be is that we would have students talking more with their parents and their families about those social emotional strategies and just bringing it up, not that we just did a brand new, um, we did a brand new unit or we had a lesson on this today, so. 
We also talked a lot about the, the Rise Up Mental Health Framework that we have in place in the district. And um, Rise Up is, is a, a program that we have in place that really focuses in on education around mental health. So not only educating students, but also educating staff, parents, and community members, identifying students that are struggling with mental health issues, and then finally providing direct services for those students who we identify. Um, so along with those pieces, we have really strong partnerships with Catalpa Health and Samaritan Counseling. So Catalpa Health has been providing clinical therapy in last year was nine of our 21 schools. Um, and Samaritan Counseling does the wellness screen. Uh, last year was for students in grades eight through 12. And we do that, offer that every single year. And uh, it's made a huge difference. Mm -hmm. um, we look to expand that every year. Fortunately, going into next year, we received a DPI school-based mental health grant which is gonna provide us with $75,000 each year over the next two years so we can expand Rise Up even more. So mm -hmm. going into next year, we're gonna be in three, possibly even four more schools mm -hmm. providing the clinical therapy, uh, but we're also looking for ways to possibly expand that screening down to the sixth grade level. So then it would be six through 12 mm -hmm. every single year. Um, the hope is eventually that we're able to provide that clinical therapy in every one of our schools uh, we're, we're heading in that direction. Eventually we'll get there, uh, but we continue to look for um, alternative funding sources to help us um, you know, expand our footprint. So there is a lot of things going on in the Oshkosh Area School District as far as supports and getting students what they need and in a timely fashion when they need it. As we're going into next year, and as you saw in the draft of our strategic plan that I believe is coming to you for approval, is that we are gonna be really focusing on equity. And as we start thinking about um, the alternative ways to graduation, so like the wait list for the, the Riverside program was at 47 approaching 50. We have students that are looking at GED option two. Our five middle schools are saying that we need alternative programming across five middle schools. What our equity work would tell us is if we need that much intervention and we are needing that much support for all students, perhaps we need to be doing things differently universally. And so as we start to go through our equity work, we're going to be looking at it systemically of how are we providing students to all when they need it in a timely fashion and not in a way that provides a stereotype threat or a stereotype lift, but that you can, that a student that a child, that a family can access the supports that they need without it um, being considered um, not a good thing to reach out for help, right? Mm -hmm. And so we are going to be continuing to develop that and review that as we go into next year and will absolutely be part of the strategies and the tactics that you're going to see in our strategic planning because um, a universal curriculum or when you're looking at a system, if it becomes interventions becomes your curriculum, we're doing something wrong. We need to be having um, we need to be looking at it systemically. And so, um, we yes, we're going to be looking at district-wide expansion, but you're going to see more about it district-wide circling back to what can we do for all kids and making sure that it's in an inclusive environment and that all kids are being included. Um, and that goes into examining our traditional educational structure resources, but really, how do we give students and families choice and how, they, how, they, um, how their students are educated? Um, and what is the best fit, um, what is best fit for them. So that's where we're going to be temporarily limiting, saying before we go and expand another section of Riverside, before we go and expand into an, um, to all five middle schools, let's, let's pause and really look at what are we doing universally. Any questions? I asked. I just, I'm so excited by what you just said. Yeah, me too. That I'm about to like jump out of my chair. Right. Yeah. It, it is a I wondering like, that I, I continue to have that like if we have to continue, mm -hmm. like we're treating symptoms and now we're treating them over here and then we're over here. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a minute, maybe mm -hmm. there's a bigger, so. Right. And when the waiting lists keep getting bigger and bigger. Right. Yeah. Then it's more than just pockets. Correct, yeah. correct. Because the best, um, uh, something I said recently in a meeting is the, the best credit recovery 
programming is to not need credit recovery right. in the first place. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so how right. are we going to be, how are we going to be, we're always going to need supports for students, yeah. right? Yeah. Because uh, life happens, we have struggles, yeah. we have all those things. However, when we have that many students that have that many needs, we need to really be looking at what we're doing universally and yeah. what we're doing equitably. Um, yes. We are becoming a more diverse school district, a more diverse community, and we need to make sure that we are supporting all kids. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or questions? Mm -hmm. Special. You you've raised some some really good uh, made some really um, for me thought provoking mm -hmm. uh, statements tonight in terms of why do we have so many mm -hmm. requests for intervention services? Um, we know that life happens. We know that uh, most teachers, I think, would say that the the students who come across the thresholds into their classrooms are not the same as they were 25 years, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. So for me, I guess that raises the question, what are we doing differently if we know the, the children are different? And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with them, but they're different. Um, they spend much more time, for example, on devices than kids did 20 or 25 years ago. So they. I've, I've seen some research that suggests that th that kind of time on these electronic devices wires the brain differently. Mm -hmm. And so what, how are we adjusting our instructional strategies and our approaches to ensure success of all of our students? Mm -hmm. And um, I know that Dr. Cartwright has indicated that we're going to do a reboot on strategic, not only strategic planning, but also on standards-based learning. Yes in the coming year and so perhaps some of those answers will come through. The district has a long history of, and I haven't lived through all of it by the way, but the district has a long history of serving students um, who need an extra boost of some kind, what might have been called years ago at risk or um, alternative education with a program at the middle schools, they called it GIT, G-I-T, which stood for uh, Get It Together. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember what the high school program was, but at that time, uh, back in, that was probably the 1980s, if students were in that program, uh, and I remember specifically talking to some staff at North High at that time, that one of the rewards for their meeting their goals for the day was to go out and have a cigarette in the smoking area behind North High. Obviously, we're well beyond that point, but that was, that was an approach that was used back in the 1980s. Um, there were... Project Get, and I think there was a successful... It was STAR, I believe it was, Star. was the other program, yes. Okay, there was a program at the middle school, which I think may have helped lead to putting deans of students in middle schools, and um, for a while there was a, an approach to our middle schools where uh, teachers were asked to teach one more section, because we'd gone to, we added a section to however many class periods we had, and the trade-off on that was that the classes were supposed to be smaller, but then over time they were not. They were, mm -hmm. they got larger. So th the concept of um, assisting students who, for whom the, the regular program, however that's defined, is not working has been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and that's good because the district has identified that as a need in past years, but we need to deal with the students in the here and now, Correct. regardless of what the history is. So I like the idea of somewhat putting things on pause in terms of expanding services until we get a, a big picture and or better handle on what are the needs and then how does that fit in from a budget perspective. Um, right because we do not have unlimited funds and we have to balance needs uh, across the district. But I am very pleased that we've been able to address um, staffing, additional counseling staffing at the elementary levels in this coming year. I think that will, will help a lot. So I'm looking forward to this coming back to us at some point as part of a bigger picture in terms of how are we addressing needs, how does this fit in with the strategic plan, the goals and uh, key performance indicators, and how does this fit our guiding principle of students first up? It does, so how do we, how do we address all this and make sure that we're accountable uh, for results? So thank you. Anyone else?
All right, thank you very much. Thank you. And we'll move on to the consent res uh, resolution agenda. For the consent agenda, the board has been furnished with background material on each item or has discussed it at a previous meeting. These will be acted on with one vote without discussion. If a board member wants to discuss any item, it will be pulled out of the cons consent agenda and will be voted on separately. Um, I've been asked to pull um, resolution 1B and 1C. Are there any other ones a board member would like to pull out tonight? Um, probably the legislative one. That's, on That's separate. It's separate. Yeah. It's already okay. separate. Yeah. Never mind. Okay. All right. The board will consider approval of one personnel resolution A appointments, temporary appointments, appoint, uh, resignations, and salaries. Two, resolution authorizing issuance of an order, detachment of small territory. Uh, number three, policy updates. A, 1130, conflict of interest. B, 1400, job descriptions. C, 1422, non-discrimination and equal opportunity, equal employment opportunity. D, 2260, non-discrimination and access to equal employment opportunity. E. 3122, non-discrimination and equal employment opportunity. F, 3230, conflict of interest. G, 4122, non-discrimination and equal employment opportunity. H, 4230, conflict of interest. I, 5512, use of tobacco, nicotine, and related products by students. J, 5517, student anti-harassment. K, 5610, suspension and expulsion. L, 7440, facility security. M, 9150, school visitors. N, 5112, entrance age. O, 2700.01, school performance and accountability. P, 2420, education for employment. Q, 2270, religion in the curriculum. R, uh, excuse me, 1662, employee anti-harassment. S, 3362, employee anti-harassment. T, 4362, employee anti-harassment. U, 3120, employment of professional staff. V, 3139, staff discipline. W, 3140, non-renewal, termination, and resignation. X, 3143, non-renewal of administrative contracts. Y, 6220, budget preparation. Z, 6235 fund balance, and AA, 6520 payroll deductions. Number four, 0155.7. That's uh, a separate item. Mm. It's, it's mm, item. No, this no. is approving the policy. The resolution is appointing the committee members. What up, go on. Is that correct? I guessed. Yes. Cart, right? Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's correct. So four was 0155.7 legislative committee. Number five, 2019 to 2024 Cobison contract. Number six, tentative agreement with Oshkosh Education Association OEA. Number seven, <coughs> tentative agreement with Oshkosh Paraprofessional Educators Association OPEA. Number eight, tentative agreement with Non-Teaching Education Association NTEA. Number nine, wage increase for International Association of Theatrical and Stage Employees, known as IATSE, I-A-T-S-E. Number 10, wage increase for eligible food service employees. Number 11, base increase for eligible extracurricular employees. Number 12, administrator and general exempt slash non-exempt compensation 2019-2020. And number 13, goals, division priorities, and market differences for strategic plan 3.0. So moved. Second. Second. Please call the roll. Salaji. Carlin. Aye. Carlin. Aye. Evans. Aye. Evans. Aye. Garner. Aye. Garner. Aye. Herzog. Aye. Herzog. Aye. Olmsted. Aye. Olmsted. Aye. Peschel. Aye. Peschel. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you very much. Resolution 1B, be it resolved that the Oshkosh Area School District Board of Education Approve the retirements as filed with the Secretary to the Board of Education. So moved. Second. Uh, this item again provides us with an opportunity to thank and to recognize the contributions of two staff members who are choosing to enter a new age and stage of life known as retirement. 
and we want to thank Alex Vance, who has been a, an assistant fire person too at Oshkosh North High School since 2011, and Karen Wendland, who is retiring as a supervisor teacher assistant at Oshkosh North High School, where she has served the district since 2000. So we wish these people well, and we certainly thank them for their years of contributions to the children and the uh, families of our school district. Any other comments? Please call the roll. Carolyn? Aye. Carolyn I. Evans? Aye. Evans I. Garner? Aye. Garner I. Herzog? Aye. Herzog I. Olmsted? Aye. Olmsted I. Peschel? Aye. Peschel I. Strategy? <coughs> Motion carried. Thank you very much. Resolution 1C, be it resolved that the Oshkosh Area School District Board of Education approve the administrative appointment and salary schedule as filed with the Secretary to the Board of Education. So moved. Second. Discussion. Dr. Cartwright. If I may, um, I would like to request that Mr. Moore come to the table so that you can see who he is in person. <laughs> um, well, I have an opportunity to give you a little bit of information about him um, and uh, any uh, comments that he would like to address to the board if that's provided. Um, so Mr. Moore is actually coming to us. He has 20 years of administrative experience. Um, he currently serves as an elementary school principal um, where he's been in that role for 13 years um, over in Econo Falls Elementary School. Uh, previous to that, he was a high school principal uh, for three years at Sturgeon Bay High School and prior to that an assistant principal um, in high, at the high school level as well. Um, so that would be over again at Econo High, um, high School. So. Some information about Mr. Moore is that he has a definite proven track record um, when it comes to uh, having a deep understanding about instructional practices, um, also understanding behaviors, which was um, something that we were really looking at, um, a very strong analytical background, um, decision making, and communication. Um, so, I, you know, we were like, okay, so Mr. Moore, we'll, you know, you're applying for an assistant principal position. And so one of the things that he, he was very clear on is that, you know, he says, I know I've been in elementary school for a while now. I want to go back to where my, where my passion is, um, which is back in the high school. And he said, I also want to make sure that I'm, I'm coming into a much larger school district mm -hmm. um, than where he has been in the past. Um, so we, it's, um, I'm very honored and very pleased to make the recommendation to the board tonight uh, for Mr. Moore to be taking the position of assistant principal at Oshkosh North High School. Um, Mr. Moore, anything you would like to add? I appreciate the introduction. Um, great to be here this evening. Um, just really excited for the opportunity to potentially serve as an assistant principal at North High School to really get to know the kids and families and staff and in the community and just really to to serve and to help the kids be successful and um, contribute any way that I can. You know, I've, I've, I've known about Oshkosh. I had lived in Oshkosh when I went to college and then early in my married life and know of it as a very progressive district. The at-risk presentation this evening really kind of confirmed that for me, that this is the kind of district that I'd really like to be a part of. And so 24 years later, when this opportunity came around after we had moved from Oshkosh, we'd just really be excited to be um, a part of that, um, a part of that team at North High School, and a part of the community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Mm -hmm. Please call the roll. Evans. Aye. Evans. Aye. Garner. Aye. Garner. Aye. Herzog. Aye. Herzog. Aye. Olmsted. Aye. Olmsted. Aye. Pischel. Aye. Pischel. Aye. Salaji. Carlin. Aye. Carlin. Aye. Motion carried. Congratulations. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. All right. It all starts tomorrow for you. Yes. It does. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything here. It doesn't appear that we have any individually considered resolutions at this time. Um, the next agenda item is to appoint committee members to the newly formed board legislative committee. Um, That's how I messed up. I never went down to page two. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Evans, we all, we all have your yeah. issues yeah. now and then. Um, is there anyone who would be interested in serving on that committee, first of all? Me, me, me. Me? All right. pretty much go around the table. No, thank you. If I weren't the board president, I would be buying for a <laughs> position on this committee, but that precludes my service. So I would like to um, 
make the appointment as the chair, Mr. Evans, because he's served on the resolutions, policy and resolutions um, representative of this district to the WASB or Wisconsin Association of School Boards for at least three years running, four years running. And I know uh, Mrs. Carlin has had a, a great interest in this as well, so I would like to appoint her as the vice chair, I think that's called. Okay. Um, and we can have up to three committee members, so do we have another three? Yeah. Anyone else? I don't know what Liz, how Liz felt. I think she was interested also from what I... Yes. The, uh, she had expressed an interest, but right. we did not confirm Fair. that. Okay. Well, well we could, as board president, you can just assign it, right? <laughs> or we can uh, wait until... Uh, you're not here, you're on yeah, it. Right? You're on it. <laughs> <laughs> and president of the PTO. Way, I think. That's what's yeah, happening. That yeah. uh, well, maybe we should wait until the next meeting or a subsequent meeting. We can always mm -hmm. appoint a third person so, at that okay. time. Okay. So I won't be asking to be appointed I'll continue my my legislative advocacy outside of okay. outside of the committees okay. so just as long as you coordinate with them mm -hmm. and yep. we're okay. on the same page so. that'd be great okay good enough let's wait for uh, Mrs. Salaji's return so sure. that we can to add a third one see if she's interested in being the third person okay. or else we can do some arm twisting of, <laughs> of the other board members so do you uh, just clarification do you want to um, Table this item into our oh, next, no, no. next board meeting. No, or I'd like you saying go no. ahead. Okay, let's yep. appoint these two. Appoint the two. I don't think it requires no. a vote. We don't need any okay. of that. So no, uh, we'll wait for the third no potential problem. person. I was just for making sure. Subsequent meeting. Thank you. I appreciate that. Very good. Request for future agenda items. Yes. I was wondering, I'm throwing it out on the table. You guys can reject it. But one of the things that came up in the listening session and then again tonight in public forum was. Um, what are our policies around reuse and recycling of items? Yeah. And, yeah. and I know at one of the years I was on the board, we had a bunch of kids come and they wanted to start a recycling program. And I don't know whatever happened with that. I don't even remember where, which school they were from. I want to say it was Oklahoma, but I don't think that's right. And I don't know how we do it as an agenda item, but I wanted to throw it out there and see what you guys think. We can definitely put together um, a work, uh, like a work session for you um, related to that. Mm -hmm. If I may ask, um, to be quite candid with you, yeah. um, if you could uh, uh, provide me with just a little bit of time on There's this, no because what I would like to do is, based off the information that we have received and based off the yeah. results of the investigation that we are currently yeah. underway, yeah. Um, there may be some additions and some revisions to, the sure. uh, to our current practices. Um, in that, and I would like to, if at all possible, provide you with the most current information. Good. Good. I Thank agree. you. Great. Yes. Great. Yeah. Actually, I had reviewed our policies, and I believe it's 7130, although I'm not remembering that correctly. But we do have a, a policy related to um, recycling or discarding equipment yeah. and materials. Yes. It's, um, it's not very specific, which nope. is often the I case. It, it defines the what, and not necessarily the how, but they're potentially could be administrative guidelines developed that would address uh, some of the issues that we heard this this evening which are quite concerning so mm -hmm. I think that's uh, a great idea to bring that back after administration has had sufficient time to Good. review that. I Thank agree. you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other future agenda items? I'm sorry also just for a point I'm of sorry. clarification mm -hmm. um, for uh, with the strategic plan, one of the goals and priorities that you approved this evening. Uh, this is actually listed as one of when we're talking about structures and processes. Yep. This is one of the areas we also know that good. we we feel well, that's good addressing. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Very good. Are there any other requests for future agenda items? Announcements? Any announcements? Anyone? I'd just like to announce that the annual back to school fair will be held tomorrow at Oshkosh North High School and um, they are gearing up to serve I think roughly a thousand children and um, so haircuts clothing items uh, from from the neck down I don't think they do hats but from the neck down clothing items and a variety of school supplies will be available I know they've had cookies there in the past um, but it's a great program. The community has really come together to, to help serve at least a thousand of our students who have been identified as uh, maybe needing some help to get ready for the school year. And I also want to give uh, a plug again to the meals programs at the three uh, sites, St. Andrews, First English Lutheran, 
in our Savior's Lutheran. They're, they're geared up, ready to go, and uh, they'd like to be serving more students. And so Monday through Friday, um, doesn't matter where you live in the city, you can participate in those meals mm -hmm. programs. With that, uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn to executive session for the purpose of considering the disciplinary data of specific persons under Wisconsin Statute 19.85, Paren 1, Paren F. A, review expulsion recommendation from expulsion hearing officer for a high school student who, while not at school or while not under the supervision of a school authority, engaged in conduct which endangered the property, health, or safety of others at school or under the supervision of a school authority and engaged in conduct constituting repeated refusal or neglect to obey the rules under Wisconsin Statute 120.13, Paren 1, Paren C, Paren E of Wisconsin Statutes. So moved. Second. Please call the roll. Garner? Aye. Garner, aye. 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 Hi, Colonel. Hi, Evan. Hi. Evan, hi. Welcome, Gary. This meeting is adjourned to executive session. <laughs> <laughs>